Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching Furutech. We reviewed the first build of Rising OS 1.0 and 13 in the last video. You can check that video review from the link given under the video description. I am using that ROM from the last 5 days. But as I promised I will review each and every custom ROM and their updates for the OnePlus 6 and 60. So we got yet another latest update of Superior OS. Flashing of this update is same like we did for other custom ROMs. Developer Vikas has pushed the official update so we will get the OT update. If you are already using the Superior OS just download and tap install in the OTA. It will automatically get installed. If you want to manually flash the build download the ROM from the link given under the video description. You need TWRP 3.7 to flash the update, remove pins and the password from the phone. Boot phone into the TWRP using the advanced power menu or using the volume down plus power button combos. Now tap install in a TWRP, flash the ROM. If you want a TWRP, then tap add once, select install current TWRP. Now tap wipe, select format data. If it's showing any errors, then go to the TWRP setting, there enable the RMRF setting. Go back, tap wipe and do the formatting of data once again. If you are already in the superior OS, then skip the formatting step. Reboot back to TWRP and again to the normal formatting. Now reboot to system. So all the things are done here. Today we will see what's new gates and the dabot phone for this build. We will do full performance testing with the Geekbench and UIBench. We will compare this build with the previous build. Next I reviewed all the new changes and shown some bugs with my final verdict. So watch the video till the end. Now with the further ado, let's get started. Phone booted with the elegant and beautiful boot animation of Superior OS. We already did the full review of this ROM regarding its basic things and the features. You can check that video from the link given under the video description. Let's jump to the bot phone to check what's changed here. Build date of ROM is 5th May 2023. Under the Android version is showing this is the Superior OS version 13. Android version is same, Android 13 with the same material clock history. Finally, we got the first latest security patch build of 5th May 2023. It's surprising that this old device is still running on the latest security patches. Last build was on the April security patches. Kernel version is 4.9.337 Primus, build it with the latest Clang Toolchain 14. Kernel is Say Linux. ROM is synchronized with the latest Android 13 release candidate sources 43. First we will do the full performance testing and then we will review all the changes in the build. We already seen ROM is very fluid without any hiccups, its performance is top notch. In the last video we did the testing of the screen refresh rate using the developer setting. But there is already show face option available under the OnePlus extra setting and when I enable it, ROM constantly showing the fluctuating FPS. I kept the developer setting along with it. And it's showing me the fixed FPS of 60. I apologize for the most of videos of OnePlus 6 and 60. I used this developer setting to check the FPS which is not correct. OnePlus FPS meter showing the FPS ranging between 4 to 60. Yes, these are original FPS of screen because OnePlus application uses the kernel levels of codes to show FPS. Though FPS is fluctuating constantly, ROM will feel better smooth. Apps opening, closing, switching between applications, scrolling, all the things felt better smooth and fast. Now let's run the Geekbench 6 test for first round of CPU performance testing. I got the score of 556 and 1963 for a single and multi-core. If you check the last build results, there we got the 560 and 1873. Multi-core performance seems improved slightly here and it's definitely adding some improvement in the overall performance. Next I did the OpenCL graphics API, I got the score of 2017 and for Hukan graphics API test I got the score of 1933. For old build results were 2012 and 1930. So GPU results were same for both the builds. Overall only multi-core CPU performance seems improved slightly. Visibly you can't differentiate between the old and new build, both have same kind of performance. Next I did the UI bench test for the scrolling and swapping performance testing. Less the jitter value, more fluid the scrolling and swapping in the firmware. Open the UI bench application, tap on the rendering option, then tap on the jitter. 
At the top of the application, it is showing the jitter value in the milliseconds and at the bottom there is a graph. Here jitter values remain below 0.5 which is very good result. I tried to use some applications simultaneously to check for any fluctuations in the jitter values but very small fluctuations were found here all the time it's remained below 0.5 millisecond. For last build same results were found overall developer has did the amazing job for this old device it's still feeling very smooth all the time for every activity. Now let's check out the change log detail. First, developer has improved the pocket mode detection for this ROM. To enable the pocket mode, go to the settings and under the display, who gets this toggle, prevent accidental wake up. Once enabled, if you screen off the phone and place it in the pocket, screen display will remain off continuously, unless and until we unlock it. It uses the screen proximity sensor. If you manually place the finger on this sensor, it will show us this information on the screen that is pocket mode is on. If you want to exit this mode just long press the power button or don't cover the proximity sensor. Now this mode is working perfectly without any delay. Next they added dynamic spacing for the lock screen clock. Actually this is a change log generated information for all the devices for which this update release. Developer didn't add the lock screen clock customizations in this build. So we didn't got this feature for the lock screen clocks. All these features will be added in the upcoming builds. Next developer has fixed some issues for the picture in picture mode animations. It's more smoother and without any lag. You can check on the screen it's working perfectly for the Chrome application. Except this developers updated the pixel prop UI and the power of alarm service. These are also source side underhood changes at not visibly available to show. So these are some minor changes has been done here. Now let's check out the bugs and the issues in the ROM. All known issue of void wine is still on L3. So you can't able to use the Netflix or the Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. But there is a Netflix spoofing is available under the miscellaneous setting of the superior lab. If anyone using the paid service of Netflix then please tell in the comment section is it working or not after using the spoofing option. Next issue is for the volume rocker wake up feature. Under the superior lab and under button section, who gets this option? Even if we enable this toggle, we can't able to wake the screen using the volume buttons. Next bug is for the media cover art feature. This feature can be found under the lock screen. It shows some blurred media cover art on the lock screen when you play any songs. But in all the Android 13 custom ROM, it seems broken and not working. One user in the last video commented about the some bugs like the battery percentage is overlapping with the time in the status bar. That's not found here. Overall this update has very small change log but developer has done lots of underwood changes to improve the ROM performance and stability. Which can be seen in the day to day activities. It's running very smooth and failed stable. New ROM source base has done amazing job for the performance of this ROM. So that's it for today guys. Hope you like my work. Then please do like and share this video. Subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.